All right, so don't you all hate it when you're late to class or when you have a trip that you want to go to but you know it's going to take forever to reach that destination? Don't you just want to reach your destination in the blink of an eye? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alan, and today I'm going to introduce a revolutionary piece of technology currently in the works known as the Hyperloop. Now, if this is successful in all desired travel aspects, the Hyperloop will help transportation methods become better and more efficient and will ultimately make us travel faster. So right now, our travelers um, are traveling at inefficient speeds because of high traffic and at least inefficient travel methods. And right now I'm going to explain that we can do better, we can be faster than traveling, and I'm going to explain the situations of safety and speed with cars, trains, and planes that we're using today and how ultimately the Hyperloop can diminish all of those and make us faster at travel. Alright, so let me explain right now what certain issues we have with our travel methods. So according to the Association for International Safety Travel, we are seeing an annual death rate of 1.3 million people in road crashes, and over 37,000 of those are U.S. deaths. And we could do much better than that. And also, the Maglev is the fastest train right now in the world, travels at 374 miles per hour. Now to you, it might seem pretty fast, but just wait until we get to the Hyperloop part. And that was according to a journalist named Caldwell, and there was an article on the map left in Japan, published in 2015. Now, in 2013, a pilot by the name of Tim Morgan wrote on an article forum that said commercial airplanes generally fly between 500 and 600 miles per hour. All right, so, but what we know is that these aren't very eco-friendly because, as I've stated, that according to a Danish cohort study done in 2011, researchers found that an increase in cervical and brain cancer um, risks, of course, increase because of these toxic pollutions that we are breathing in, right? Because of this source of energy that we use, this fuel. So now that I've just explained some of the issues and inefficient methods of this modern traveling methods that we do, let me go into the science behind the hybrid technology, all right? All right, so this is a conceptual design concept art. So right now it was, or actually, what we need is the Hyperloop to be um, very energy efficient, okay? So technically, we have these pods that are also in capsules, and they will carry these passengers traveling at speeds over 700 miles per hour. That's, prob that's faster actually than anything we have right now. And of course, we have solar panels that we planted along the tube track. They'll be interconnected throughout the world and they'll be powered by solar energy, of course. This is all according to, all these facts are according to Elon Musk's published journal article because he came up with the idea back in 2013 and this was his thought, and um, this is technically the science behind it, all right? And so magnetic accelerators will help make this go at such a high pace, right? And according to him, he believes that it will be immune to harsh weather patterns. So have, those will have no impact on the rate of traveling, and amazingly, it will resist earthquakes, so that's pretty impressive. And right now this is a little gift that I'm going to show you. That was given by SpaceX. It's a little animation of how it could look like in the near future, right? So since I just talked about the science behind it, I'm going to explain where it is essentially right now, okay? And this is what it could look like in the near future. Right now, it's actually in the hands of anyone. But picture this. This tube built 
and interconnected throughout the whole world, not just in the U.S. And imagine a scenario where you're going to go a couple cities away to Christmas vacation for your family gathering. No worries, go to your local Hyperloop station and you'll be there in a matter of minutes when it could take hours by other means of transportation. Right? So, like I said, Elon Musk actually sort of gave up on the project. He just kind of presented it as a counter proposal for California. Recently, actually right now, they're building um, a railway system that is supposed to be really fast, but he just thought it was ridiculous, it was going to be too expensive. So he came up with this idea, and now he actually left it into the hands of other companies. We have Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, a new company that is emerging in this, and they're trying to carry this out. We also have Australia recently coming out and saying that they're coming into the race, and China is getting involved. I believe UCLA a couple years ago, I don't know if they still are doing this now, they're conducting their own research. So when you have the whole world getting involved in this, you know eventually it's probably going to come out, and it's going to be successful, and the whole world's probably going to use it, right? So just imagine that that's what it could look like, and why not? Maybe it could be placed underwater. It doesn't just have to be over land, like how are we going to travel? Well, we could probably be placed underwater. And so I just talked about this, and hopefully you all understand, have a better understanding of the science behind it, and what Hyperloop essentially is, right? So, like I said before, right now we're, we might be traveling pretty fast, but in reality it's kind of slow compared to the future. And in terms of safety, it's pretty inefficient. We have all these deaths and accidents that are happening in trains, cars, and planes, of course. And the Hyperloop can trump all of this, ultimately. In fact, right now, why not participate in this by taking matters into your own hands and possibly donating to some of the research that's going involved? I believe you can look up Hyperloop Transportation Technologies online. I believe they accept donations. And you could possibly donate to the research construction that's going on right now. And ultimately, we are seeing a revolution in front of our eyes where, in reality, we're probably going to reach our final destination.